to go back to the issue of economic ideas, there's a, a way of thinking about it that's very comfortable and is kind of true at least some of the time, that it's a bit like an engine manual. So you, you drive this car and it breaks down. So then you open up the bonnet and you look inside and you get your engine manual out and, and there it is. And this is how it works. It, engineering tolerances, number of cylinders, combustion, it's all there. And it's lovely to think the world's like this. But what tends to happen is the car breaks down every now and again, you open it up and the engine's slightly different from what the manual tells you or has done something that the manual says is kind of impossible. So then you have to rewrite the manual. The problem for economics, as it's become very, very mathematical and technical, is that the intrinsic beauty, and rigor, and appeal of the models themselves have become, if you will, an attractor, something that sort of research gravitates towards. And whether this actually provides us with good, flexible engine manuals for the world seems to be coming apart rather than coming together. There's a great attraction in these types of models. They create a world of equilibrium, a world of stability, almost by accident. They're just a consequence of the model, and it's a beautiful and seductive world. And in a sense that, to use a hackneyed term, that neoliberal or neoclassical worldview, I wish I could share it, because it would be a fantastic world if it were true. But if it's not true, we really need to rethink why it is that we're drawing an engineering manual for something that operates radically differently and has radically different engineering principles from the thing that we're doing the manual about. That's difficult because in order to do that, you may have to fundamentally rethink whether that type of engineering process, equilibrium modeling, et cetera, is really the way to do this, or whether you need to be much more empirical, much more historical, et cetera. And if you do that, then you're challenging the intellectual capital investments of a generation of scholars who are being used to being on top, being listened to, and in a sense, giving the authoritative declaration and definition of the way the world works. That's never easy, and it takes time.